Floralist. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here for our session for the College of Science. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that you can see um, everything that I'm sharing. My co-panelists today are Olivia Abbott. She's a fellow College of Science academic advisor. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Romack. I'm an academic counselor in the College of Science, and we are here to help you learn about all of the different programs that are available um, within the College of Science as far as our majors, as well as some of our special programs. Another co-panelist we have here today is Dr. Liu. He's the faculty advisor for the math department. And so he will let you know all about the math program. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen and um, we will get started here in a little bit. Thank you guys so much for joining us. All righty. So like I said, um, the College of Science offers a variety of different majors. Some of the majors include majors within the biological sciences. So the biological sciences programs consist of biology, biochemistry, ecology, medical lab sciences, um, and then the physical sciences, so to speak, are chemistry, math, and physics. So we'll hear all about all the majors and programs available within those departments. And then we also want to let you know about some of the special programs we have here, in, here at UNT and within the College of Science that really help us stand out. Um, and those programs are health professions, forensic science, and Teach North Texas. So that's a basic overview of what all we're going to be covering today. So we're going to kick it off uh, with the Department of Biological Sciences so that way you can learn about all the majors offered within that department. Welcome to the Department of the Biological Sciences. And today I'm I'm so sorry, everyone. Let me try that again. It appears I made some uh, technical errors. So let me um, unshare and then share my screen again. I'm so sorry, everyone. Thank you for being so patient with me. Um, always a constant in the Zoom webinars. We always have a little bit of technical difficulties, but we'll work around that. All right. Let's see if I can try this again. All righty. Welcome to the Department of the Bar biological sciences. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different degree programs we offer here. So one of them will be the bachelors of arts and second will be the bachelor of sciences. So this, these are going to offer you the four year degree programs. When you are going to focus on the bachelors of arts, this is mainly focuses on the non-STEM careers. So when I say non-STEM careers, that means the health careers. So if you want to go and be a doctor, or you want to go to the, you know, be a physician's assistant, pharmacy, physical therapy, optometry. So you will have so many different options in the field of medicine. And then you can go for the bachelor's of sciences. So if you are interested in the science, then what you can do is you can go for the STEM careers where you can be the scientist, you can be the engineer or the mathematician, statistician, you can work in the national lab or in the research lab or be the professor at the university. So here are our, some of the four year degree programs. In biology, we offer bachelor's of arts and the bachelor of sciences. Most students who wants to focus in the field of medicine, then they, oh, they go for the bachelor's of art for the health education careers like that. But if you want to be a scientist, then most students, not necessarily, but they go for the bachelor of sciences where you can be the scientist. 
In the biochemistry, we offer bachelor's of arts and the bachelor of science. And in the in these programs, you would be able to learn about the biochemistry, chemistry, biology, and you would be able to go for the medicine as well as go to the research labs and work as a professor or the research scientist. Then we have the Department of Ecology where uh, you will uh, where you will get to learn all about the ecosystems. So here you will see that Ecology for Environmental Sciences, we offer the BS degree. The students who want to pursue this field, they mostly do not want to go for the field of medicine. Then we have another program, which is called as the Medical Laboratory Sciences, that is the uh, BSMLS. So here uh, students, they get to learn and perform the blood test, tissue tests, and they will get to learn, you know, quality control, different technical skills, and you get a clinical training as well. So that's another very good uh, field of work, which you can go for. Now I'll give you some information about our advising office. Here, all the advisors you can see at the biological sciences, Dr. Jim Bidnars, Dr. Hyunju Kim, Dr. Jessica Moore, Dr. Anna Hoynhouse, and myself, Dr. Purnima Niyogi. And uh, whenever you have any questions regarding your career, which, which degree you want to get for the best profession you want to be in, please contact us and we would be able to provide the help. Regarding the research opportunities, Dr. Jim Bednars is going to talk to you in a minute. So here's the information about all the um, advisors in the biological sciences. And if you have any concerns and you want to have an appointment, please contact the biological sciences at the email biology at unt.edu. So now Dr. Bednars is going to talk to you and tell you more about the research opportunities. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Jim Bednars. I'm a senior lecturer and advisor in the Department of Biological Sciences. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about undergraduate research opportunities. And to do that, I am going to share my screen. And the first undergraduate research opportunity that we have is a special course called Phages. And what <clears throat> phages are, it's, it's a course that where you do research on bacterial phages. And what bacterial phages are, are these little structures here. And they're basically viruses that infect bacteria. And there are thousands of species, maybe millions of species of bacteria out there. Many of them are undescribed. And these bacteria all have viruses that attack them. And there are thousands of undescribed bacterial phages. So what this research does, it's a freshman course. It's for freshmen. It allows you to get involved in research in your first year at UNT. And you study and identify bacterial phages. So this is a two-course sequence, a laboratory sequence, uh, Biology 1750, um, two credit hours, followed by a second related course called Biology 1755. And, and during this two-course sequence, you would work with other students and identify an undescribed species of bacterial phage. And in the second session, second lab session, you would actually sequence the DNA. And if you're successful doing this, uh, you might be able to present your research at a scientific meeting like these students here and actually get credit for this research that you have done as a freshman. Now, I put the website here. If you want more information, you do have to apply for this. Uh, usually, it's uh, students are accepted on a first come, first serve basis. So you can check out this website if you want more information about the phages project. Now, the other way to get research is do doing directed research under a specific faculty member. So I'm an ecologist, so I study 
avian ecology, the ecology of birds. So here's a photograph of me working with an undergraduate student, uh, banding and measuring a, a wild bird. This is Taylor Wheat, one of the undergraduates I worked with. Now, of course, this photograph was taken pre-COVID, so we're not wearing masks in this photograph, but today we, we do do this research, but we're wearing masks. Now here at UNT, we strongly encourage undergraduates to get involved in research. Uh, this is a great credential for getting into medical school or getting into graduate school in biology. To do this, you have to get involved. You have to be assertive and show initiative. You really need to contact a faculty member and discuss with him or her the possibility of undergraduate research. So to start off with, you need to do some research. Basically, research faculty members and see what kind of science they're involved in. And if you find a faculty member that is doing the science that is of interest to you, you need to contact that professor. You need to meet with that professor and you have to present yourself. You have to demonstrate to that professor that, that you have potential that you have a lot of interest in his or her research and that you'll 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 do the work and you you can do good quality research and then the professor could accept you into his or her lab and of course if you do connect with a professor and make an agreement for you to do undergraduate research make sure you follow through with your commitment it will definitely pay off in your future career. So I'm gonna just do a world one um, <clears throat> view of some of our faculty members. We have over 40 faculty members that you could potentially work with in our department. I'm gonna just show you information about eight faculty members. This is a slide that depicts the work of Dr. Jaime uh, um, Jimenez. And he works on animal ecology. He does a lot of work on mammals, um, looking at ecology of rodents, uh, also larger uh, mammals. Uh, he's got a student working on endangered box turtles and they're doing radio tracking. And he's working on these guys here. These are, are, are water bears, a very interesting critter. His students work both in the field and in the laboratory. Another faculty member that's doing very exciting research is Anna Alonzo. Uh, she encourages involvement by undergraduate students. Uh, what they do in Dr. Alonzo's lab is look at what chemicals promote plant resistance to diseases and environmental stresses. And by understanding these processes, they can develop plants that are more resistant to diseases, food plants or plants that potentially could substitute for fossil fuel. Uh, and second, our third lab is uh, the lab of Dr. Brian Airy and Rosin McCrary. They are also doing biotech research on plants. They're looking at plant DNA. They are inserting new DNA that affects the expression of proteins to get beneficial qualities in the plant, such as disease resistance or larger fruits. Uh, another one of our researchers is Dr. Jody Shaw, who encourages involvement by graduate students. Uh, Dr. Shaw is the chairman of our department, and his students look at how plants cope with various forms of stress, such as a predator, such as this aphid here, or uh, fungal disease such as fusarium. This is wheat blight here. So understanding how plants deal with stress basically allows us to manage mechanisms so we can improve the plants so they can deal with stresses from diseases or predators. Uh, another example of some interesting ecological work is done in Dr. David Hollinghouse's lab, and he involves a lot of undergraduate students. He studies aquatic systems, particularly uh, things like endangered fish um, or the community structure of 
fish in aquatic systems. His students work both in the field and in the laboratory. Um, another faculty member that's doing exciting research is Dr. Amy Lung. She works a lot with undergraduate students. She's a toxicologist. Uh, she looks at how toxins affect human cells or affect human physiology. Uh, and of course, by understanding that we can uh, address the, we can understand the impacts of toxins and recommend which toxins need to be properly regulated. Again, this slide shows a couple of her undergraduate students that presented their research at scientific meetings. And finally, but not least, is my research group, um, Dr. Jim Bednars, and I look at ecological and conservation questions. I primarily work with birds. Uh, here's some research that we're doing on American kestrels, a little falcon, a species that is of, of some conservation concern. And we documented that these birds, males and females, sometimes pair in the winter, which was a real surprising finding. Uh, I'm doing some work in South Texas on a critter called the Harris's hawk, which uh, lives in groups of more than two birds. And finally, we're doing a lot of research on this, this songbird here, the painted bunting, which is rather amazing. And this is one of my students, that um, Tessa Bouchard, who presented her undergraduate research at a local scientific meeting and got the award for best student paper. And finally, I, I do want to encourage you, of course, to wherever you go, UNT, I hope, but if you go to another institution, always get involved. And one way, in addition to doing undergraduate research is by getting involved in the various clubs. Here at UNT, we have 400 or so clubs. Many of them are academic clubs, such as this, SEER, Society for Ecological Restoration. This club is very attractive to students studying ecology. But we have many other clubs too, uh, clubs for pre-med students, for pre-dental students, um, for pre-veterinary students. So when you get to UNT or whatever institution you end up going to, make sure you get involved. Do undergraduate research, get involved in, the, in clubs that interest you. It will pay off. Uh, <clears throat> till I hope to see you at UNT, maybe next year. You take care and be safe. All right, y'all. So that was our information about the Department of Biological Sciences. Next, I'm going to hand things over to Olivia, who's going to speak a little bit about our chemistry programs. All right. Thanks, Sarah. If you can click through for me when I'm chatting about this, perfect. Okay. So another department we have within the College of Science is our chemistry department. So chemistry can help you think about answers to these questions. Why do we put fluoride in drinking water? Are vaccines harmful? How are medicines made? Um, how do we improve solar cell technology? So all of these things, all of these questions, if you're interested in these, are related to the field of chemistry. So a lot of our students ask, well, what could I do with a degree in chemistry? So you can go into industry. You could work on cosmetic chemistry. I actually just talked to a student who said she's interested in formulating um, makeup and skincare. Um, you could go into conservation, pharmaceuticals, forensics, um, science advocacy. There's a lot of options within industry. You could also, of course, go into chemistry teaching. Um, so you could be a K through 12 teacher. We do have a teaching certification as well at UNT that you'll hear about a little bit later. Or you could go into advanced education. So you could go to graduate school, um, get a doctorate in chemistry. You could go to a health profession. So if you're really interested in chemistry, but you wanna be a doctor, you can be a chemistry major who's also pre-med. Um, you can also go into law school. So we do have two different chemistry degrees. We have a Bachelor of Arts and we have a Bachelor of Science. Both of them are science degrees. Both of them are chemistry majors. Um, but our Bachelor of Arts gives you a little bit more of a liberal arts education, but you still get that chemistry degree. So you do have 31 hours of chemistry courses, um, but you have more availability to take some classes outside of chemistry. So for instance, if you wanted to be um, a doctor, you want to go to med school, um, and you are thinking, maybe I wanted to be a physical therapist, I'm really interested in kinesiology, you could be a chemistry major and still have some room to bring in a minor that's in a completely different field. 
So this will prepare you for some different tracks. So you could go to grad school in chemistry. You could get a job in industry, um, like we talked about on the previous slide. You could teach or you could go into a health professional program. Our Bachelor of Science in Chemistry is typically what we recommend for students who are interested in getting an advanced degree in chemistry. So it is more in depth on chemistry courses. That program is certified by the American Chemical Society. So this is a certification that only some select schools have for their chemistry degree. So it's a very um, incredible program. You get 42 hours of chemistry courses. 21 of those hours are gonna be advanced chemistry. So you get a more in-depth chemistry requirement. You do have to have a STEM minor. So something in our department. So that could be math, biology, physics, et cetera. So this major similarly could be used for teaching, but it also would be geared towards graduate school in chemistry. If you wanted to do chemistry research in some kind of laboratory, whether that be government or a private lab, um, this degree would also work if you're interested in going into a health professional school. So a chemistry degree gives you tons of options of different things that you could do um, while allowing you to choose if you want a more liberal arts focus or a more technical chemistry degree. So we do have a lot of resources on campus for our chemistry students. Um, the first is the Chemistry Resource Center. So this is a tutoring center in the chemistry department. So it's staffed by graduate students in chemistry. So if you are one of our biology majors, you're in your first chemistry class and you're like, oh man, this is really tough. I'm having a hard time understanding. You can go to that Chemistry Resource Center, get tutored by a grad student who's a chemistry major or a chemistry student so that you can get some extra support in learning those concepts. You can also go to the CCIL, which is our Computational Chemistry Instructional Lab. So it's a computer lab. Um, it has particular software that you might be using for research or for other classes. So that's another resource available to you. We also do have a peer-led team learning um, resource. So you can go to these, they're upper level students, so juniors or seniors who are chemistry majors, and they hold study sessions outside of your classes that you can attend. So very low pressure, you're working with other students, but students who have mastered the material that you're in, so you can get support from your peers. So in addition to great degree programs, we have a lot of options um, for you to get involved and get support. Another one of those options is gonna be research opportunities. So we have a lot of research. We just heard that presentation about all of the research or some of the research opportunities within our biology department. We also have research opportunities within our chemistry department. So some of those are gonna be in these kinds of fields. So chemistry education, analytical chemistry, forensic science, another program we're gonna hear about later, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, physical chemistry, materials. Um, and it's strongly encouraged for our undergraduate students to connect with those faculty who are kind of leading this research and get involved in those research opportunities. So there's a lot within our chemistry department, um, a lot of opportunities and a lot of ways for you to get involved. All right, thank you so much, Olivia. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. Liu, who's going to speak a little bit about the math department and the programs and minors and certificates offered through their department. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Liu from math department. Um, in math, you can pretty much do anything you want for science, engineering, uh, even social studies. Uh, if you are a math major, um, you can also do research with our faculty member. Let me share a, a screen with you. So let me check. About our research opportunities. It won't allow me to share it for some reason. Let me check. Uh, try again. Let's see if it'll work now. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Okay, so here we go. There are uh, quite a few math faculty who uh, do research with undergraduate students. Um, it ranges from pure math to applied math or like application in engineering, biology, or some other areas. If you go to our website, you will find those links. Another thing I want to show you is we have quite a few scholarships you can apply to in the math department. Actually, the application is through, through uh, the College of Science uh, scholarship online. But I just want to introduce to you, we have quite a few scholarships you can apply to. In addition, after one year or two, say after you finish calculus, linear algebra, those classes, you can get a job as a tutor or a grader in our department. There are a lot of opportunities if you are studying here. We have um, three um, advisors. Two for general math major, one is for the actual science. Anytime if you have a question, you can email us. We'll usually we'll reply to you within 24 hours. So we can pretty much answer your questions uh, very quickly. So whenever you have a question, don't hesitate. That's pretty much I want to say. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. Great to hear about all the opportunities that, that are available for math students, whether you're majoring in math or if you decide to do a minor in math or one of the certificates. So um, that brings us to our final department we wanna talk about. I'm going to share a little bit about um, the physics department. So let's see. And I'm a new 2020 high school graduate who is experiencing the weirdest transition in my life. Instead of getting to visit campuses with my parents and in person, I've had to spend a lot of time here at my computer watching recruiting videos. So since I've pretty much been a shut-in here at my house, I thought I'd tell you about something that I thought was really cool. The Mean Green Physics Universe located at the Denton campus of the University of North Texas. So you might be wondering, why physics? Well, since I was a kid, I've always been looking up at the stars and dreaming about what's out there. I look through this little red telescope, which is kind of odd looking, but it was really fun to look through. I decided I wanted to know more about the great physics program, and since I couldn't go to visit them, I decided to zoom them. Thus. Here are the results of my adventure. The UNT physics program is so varied that students can explore the smallest particles we've ever discovered to the largest black holes roaming through the universe. But I wanted to know more. This is an important step, so I wanted to share it with you. This isn't just a short YouTube clip with a few sound bites. I asked hard questions and got detailed answers. Just so, I emailed Dr. Weathers who has been teaching physics at the University of North Texas for quite a few years and has been helping students navigate the Mean Green Universe. He graciously shared his insights with me. Hi, Dr. Weathers. Hi, Chase. I understand you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Mean Green Physics Universe. Dr. Weathers, I'd like to start with one real important question that mom and dad have. What can I do with a physics degree? Well, actually a physics degree is a very useful Degree. It allows you to go into all sorts of quantitative areas where you would use reasoning and logical thought. Of course, you can go on in physics with a bachelor's degree. You can go to a graduate degree, get a PhD, you can go off and do research with a national laboratory or in industry or teach at a university. If you aren't interested in going all the way to a PhD, you can do things with a bachelor's or a master's. You can work in engineering settings or industry. We're in a hot spot in the North Texas region for semiconductor physics. So there are lots of places that use physicists for their process development and things like that. 
You can use it as a launching platform for medical school or as a radiation physicist. Uh, you can teach. So there are all sorts of things you can do. And there are resources that at the American Physical Society's webpage, for example, that describe the different things that people have done with their undergraduate physics degrees. Physics seems to be such a huge topic. What are some important physics classes I need to take to be a successful physicist? So as far as physics courses go in your undergraduate curriculum, of course, there will be a basic set of courses that you need to take to master the subject, such as in electricity and magnetism, which, by the way, is a fascinating subject. It's one of my favorites. Also in classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, and uh, perhaps statistical mechanics. But then there are also a number of elective courses that you can choose from, which are which allow you to explore some less central and a little more specialized areas of physics. We have a very nice course in nanophysics, which is, explores systems that have very small scale that can be measured in distances that are sort of 10 to the minus nine meters in, in size. Or we have a nice course that we're just now developing in optics and photonics, which deals with the way light interacts with different material systems. We have a nice course in modern astrophysics, if you're interested in astronomy or astrophysics. We have a course, an experimental course, for a number of different topics that allow you to explore some different areas of physics, nuclear physics, atomic physics, and some other types of physics. It's a very nice course, very fun course for students. So those are just some examples. Would I, as an undergraduate, be able to do any research projects or experiments? Absolutely, yes. So first, know that every undergraduate actually has to do a senior thesis project, which involves something related to research. So you would get to pair up with a faculty member in the department and do something that is tied into the research that they're doing. And of course, you can choose to work with whichever faculty member you like. And we have, a, we have 20 faculty members who are all doing research in slightly different areas. Uh, you can, for example, work with Dr. Shiner, who does precision laser spectroscopy, or with Dr. Drachev, who works with nanoscale optical systems, or Dr. Niyogi, similarly. Uh, you can work in the accelerator laboratory and do work with ion beams and how they interact with materials and are used to analyze different material systems. Um, there is a course, if you aren't sure about what you want to do, of course, you have time to figure this out, but there's also a nice experimental course that I mentioned a little bit ago. It's our advanced laboratory course, and it covers a whole gamut of experiments. So we have a course that looks at optical pumping, which is tied into how lasers work and many optical systems. We have a, an experiment that looks at nuclear magnetic resonance, where actually we make protons sing and dance for you. <laughs> we actually use Earth's magnetic field to line protons up and then let them relax and spin, and we can hear them spinning. We can convert their electronic signal to an audio signal, and it actually is something you can hear very nicely as, as, as they, 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 they dance together. <clears throat> um, we have laboratory in x-ray fluorescence. We have a gamma-gamma coincidence, so we demonstrate that gamma rays from a decaying piece of antimatter actually fly out in opposite directions from each other. So there are just a whole bunch of neat experiments that students get to do, and you actually get to choose which ones you want to do from a, from a palette or, or a, a menu. So this is a really nice course for students. It gives a broad perspective on, on experimental topics in physics, which can lead to ideas for research and, and perhaps steer you in, in directions that you didn't know you were interested in. All right, glad we got to hear a little bit about the physics department and the opportunities available for students there. So now we're going to pivot from our list of majors into some of our special programs. A lot of you guys are using the Q&A function, which is great. Continue to add questions onto there. We'll take time at the end to answer some more of those questions live, but as we're getting questions, I'm typing in some answers as well. And several of you have already brought up the fact that you're interested in health professions, whether that's pharmacy school, veterinary school, med school, et cetera. There are a lot of fields out there. There's not a specific major, for example, that's a pre-med major. 
um, for almost every health profession, it's just a matter of working those prerequisites in to the major that you selected. Certainly there are majors that have a lot of those prereqs already built in. For example, BA biology has all of the prerequisites for all the Texas medical schools already built into the degree. Versus if you were to be a dance major or a philosophy major, you would need to make sure that you work in those science classes because those majors don't require quite so many science courses. So we're going to hear a little bit from the um, Health Professions Advising Office so that you can learn about the experience of being a pre-health student here at UNT. Hello and welcome to the University of North Texas. Today we'll be talking about what it means to be a pre-health student. We'll go over basics about different pre-health pathways. We'll review coursework, things that make a competitive application, and special resources that the University of North Texas offers its students in terms of pre-health advising. Let's meet the Health Professions Advising Team, which is led by Todd Lang, Assistant Dean for Health Professions. Was at Ozog, Senior Academic Counselor, Vernon Bonner, our academic counselor, and Hannah Snowberger, our associate academic advisor. You can visit either our website or Facebook page for more information. One of the most common questions we receive as pre-health advisors is what should I major in? Students can choose any major, whether it be science or non-science. Common ones include the BA in biology with a minor in chemistry, but students are not required to enroll in those majors. If you're a pre-health student, you can major in whatever you'd like as long as you are taking the classes necessary for your chosen health profession. So it's kind of an unofficial track. Health professions include medicine, either the allopathic or osteopathic pathway, dentistry, pharmacy, physician assistant studies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, optometry, podiatry, veterinary medicine, and many others. In crafting a strong candidacy to health professional school, there are many considerations, and I like to break it down into three different categories. Numbers, clinical exposure, and extracurricular involvement. In terms of GPA, schools will look at your cumulative or overall GPA, as well as your math and science GPA, which is your biology, chemistry, physics, and math coursework factored into a separate weighted GPA. They're also gonna look at standardized tests like the MCAT, GRE, DAT, or others. Clinical exposure is another big component, and that means anywhere where you have direct patient contact. So for pre-med students, that may mean shadowing a physician, volunteering at a hospital, working as an EMT or a CNA. For pre-dental students, that may mean working as a dental assistant or shadowing a dentist. As a pre-pharmacy student, you may shadow a pharmacist or work as a pharmacy technician. There are many ways to get clinical experience. Extracurricular involvement, the next point, is another important component. Getting involved in your community is meaningful on a personal level, but also shows that you have an understanding of the challenges that people face and that you are able to connect with other human beings. The point is to do something that you're passionate about. Maybe for you, that looks like involvement in a community or church organization. Maybe it's through tutoring kids from underserved areas or coaching Little League or a soccer team. There are many ways for you to get involved in your community, both on and off campus. The next point, leadership, does not have to mean that you hold a title in a club or organization. Certainly, you can be president or treasurer of a pre-health organization. But demonstrating leadership can be done in other ways like taking charge of a project in your research lab or taking the reins of an event within a club. Don't try to do different things for each of these categories, but instead see how much they can overlap with one another. We often think of the idea of joining as many different clubs and organizations in college as we can. Well, that's great. Think of quality over quantity. If you're a member of 10 different clubs, you're probably only getting surface level involvement. It would be much more meaningful to be a member of just a few clubs, but being deeply involved in those groups so that you're getting as much out of the experience as you can. Research 
is another great opportunity to learn deeply about a subject matter. It can be in the sciences, humanities, or any other area. Now, if you're applying to an MD-PhD program, it needs to be in the hard sciences and is required, an area like biology, chemistry, microbiology. But if you're simply wanting to get involved in research because you think you'll enjoy it, consider research in any field. If you aren't able to fit a research experience into your college career, that's okay. And there are ways to still do research once you've gone to health professional school. Think about building and maintaining strong bonds with your professors and the people with whom you have worked in the healthcare setting. This may not be at the forefront of your mind now, but eventually when you apply to health professional school, you will need letters of recommendation from the people who have taught you in both science and non-science classes, as well as people who have overseen your work in the clinical environment. Essays, like your personal statement, allow you to express your passion and drive for your chosen health profession and are the why behind your pursuit of this career path. They can address challenges that you've faced and how you've succeeded and overcome those hurdles. And they highlight important values like determination and motivation to serve others, just as examples. JAMP is a state-funded program for pre-med students coming from underserved or low SES backgrounds. If a student is selected to be a JAMPer and maintains all eligibility requirements, they will interview at each Texas medical school and have direct entry into one of those schools. Benefits of JAMP include scholarships, mentoring, and internship opportunities throughout the student's college career. There are early admission and regular admissions pathways. The early admissions pathway is for high school students who must earn 27 credit hours of dual credit. The regular pathway is for students who complete 27 credit hours at UNT and meet other specific course requirements. For more information on JAMP, click the link below or contact Vernon Bonner. UNT's 3 plus 4 pathway program is our partnership with UNT Health Sciences Center, Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. Through this program, high-performing students will earn a BA in biology from UNT and a doctorate of osteopathic medicine from UNT HSC in just seven short years. The timeline is broken down below. Students would complete three years of undergraduate work at UNT, and if accepted through this program, matriculate directly into the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine and complete their four-year degree there. Benefits through this program include early acceptance to medical school, the MCAT requirement is waived if going through this program, and reduced costs because you're paying for just three years of undergraduate tuition instead of four. If you're interested in the 3 plus 4 pathway program, contact Hannah Snowberger. As we mentioned before, our website, healthcareers.unt.edu, has a wealth of information. You can find individual handouts for health professions that list commonly required prerequisite coursework, as well as specific coursework for Texas medical, dental, and other health professional schools. Now let's talk about different programs and resources available to pre-health students. The Health Professions Advisory Committee process is for medical, dental, optometry, and podiatry applicants only. You would apply for this program the spring semester prior to submitting your application to that health professional program. In order to be eligible, you must have a 3.2 GPA minimum and have completed at least 15 credit hours at UNT. The Health Professions Advisory Committee process, or HPAC, provides a holistic and comprehensive evaluation of your candidacy through interviews with our assistant dean as well as a faculty member. In addition to the committee letter, HPAC will also coordinate your individual letters of recommendation. And you can find out more by clicking the link above.
All right. So um, again, I'm glad that you guys got to hear a little bit more about the health professions uh, advising office here at UNT. So just to clarify, health professions is not a major in and of itself. You would select a major such as biology, chemistry, or biochemistry, and then the health professions advisors would be there to support you along the way to help you work those prerequisites in, get ready for your entrance exam, and uh, to be the most competitive applicant you can be as you apply for your next steps. Two other programs I wanna mention quickly before we wrap up are our Forensic Science Program and Teach North Texas Program. So our Forensic Science Program, again, isn't a separate major, it's a certificate program that you do as you're majoring in either BS Biology, BS Biochemistry, or BS Chemistry. We have a lot of exciting opportunities that are available within uh, the Forensic Science Certificate Program. Um, one thing that I always like to point out to students is that uh, all students get to do an internship with the Forensic Science Program. So we have students who intern with the FBI, with the CIA, with uh, Homeland Security, really cool experiences that they get to have. Um, and a lot of great research is going on within forensic science. Uh, Dr. Verbeck, for example, is one of our faculty members and he put a mass uh, spectrometer on top of a car and he can drive by a house and based on what's in the air, determine if it's a meth lab or not. So you get to take classes about blood splatter patterns. I mean, if this is your jam, the forensic science program um, is a great thing to explore. And so again, you can apply to that as you're applying to UNT as an incoming student, or you can apply once you're here at UNT and after your first couple of years, if you decide that that's what you wanna do, you can always apply as a sophomore or even as a junior. So that's one other program to consider. Um, and then we also have what's called our Teach North Texas program. So if you're interested in teaching at the high school level, um, what you'll do is major in the subject that you wanna teach. So if you wanna teach math or biology or chemistry or physics, but the Teach North Texas program allows you to get in the classroom from your very first semester. So you're going to be able to practice your uh, teaching skills even as a freshman, and then you'll as you're going through the program, you'll take more courses in pedagogy. And then your final semester will be your student teaching semester. We have a 100% job placement rate from this program. No other program at UNT can brag about that. Our students are heavily recruited by districts throughout the state of Texas um, because they know that the Teach North Texas program produces great teachers. Um, so that would also be something to consider if you're planning on becoming a high school teacher within any of the STEM subjects. So to wrap up, um, here is the contact information uh, for all of our departments. So if you want to take note of that or take a quick screenshot, this is how you can get in touch with us as far as our offices, our phone numbers and the websites for each of the departments. And then this is how you can get in touch with our College of Science advising office. So we are located on campus in Hickory Hall. Uh, here's our phone number. And then you can also email us if you have questions, uh, cosadvising at unt.edu. If you have questions, um, you can also meet up with our Q&A um, after session. Um, our Zoom link is um, 381-022-5022. So Olivia and I will be available for the next 30 minutes or so. So if you have any questions that we weren't able to get to you during Q&A or that weren't covered by our presentation, be sure to meet us there and we would love to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us today and go mean green. Thanks everybody. Thank y'all so much. We will wrap up now. You can view the recording of this session um, later on on the UT website. That should be up next week. And otherwise, thank you again, College of Science. Um, and y'all have a great afternoon. I'm about to put the Zoom link in our chat. So if y'all want to come to that, please hang around for just a minute while I copy that link. Thanks, Olivia. Alrighty, so let me put that in the chat.